Let's pray and ask the Lord to direct us, speak to our hearts. Father, <clears throat> you know every moment. You've known every moment since before there were moments. And we pray that out of your word, you would speak to us. And I trust that what you have been speaking to me, you have for all of us. It's not just something that I've dreamed up in my own head. I trust that, Lord. But in humility, we walk before you. And this is for you to speak, Lord, for us to hear. We ask that you'll do that in our presence today. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Before I forget, there's a, a big bowl over there. And I think Steve got that. With, yeah, I'll share about it with, when we make a circle. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. So, put my glasses on. We can see what I'm doing. So, part of what I was going to say is I would have, had I had a little more continuity, I had the time, but continuity, I would have made, I would have found references in your Bible, what page in that, which I did not do. So, um, <clears throat> We'll just we'll, we'll get we'll get through the Bible. We'll give you time to get there as we go. So God's word spoken to the people, the Jews, who had responded affirmatively to the gospel. This is in the book of Hebrews. That's why it's called Hebrews, not just the Jews, but Hebrews. Do you know the difference between Hebrews and Jews? Okay. Actually, Hebrew is a word that is derivative from Habiru. And it goes all the way back to before Abraham. And it was, he was a Habiru. He was, that was his, yeah, there's some people are, they think that that was, his family, others say that it meant a wanderer, but that's where the word Hebrew comes from, it's Habiru. Abraham was Hebrew, and so from way back, he was identified as Hebrew. So then we have his 12 sons, and one of those was Judah. Judah is where the Jews come from. Now, that all the 12 tribes, after Solomon, they split, and 10 of those tribes were referred to as Israel. And they were the northern part of what was all Israel before that. <clears throat> Israel being Jacob's new name um, and so when Israel went into captivity from Assyria and were scattered everywhere the only thing that was left of that grouping of the people that came into the promised land was Judah and Benjamin and that became known as Judah. And about 150 years later, they went into captivity to Babylon, and then they came back, and that's, they, they were the Jews, and that's, Jesus was a Jew. He was also an Israeli, because he was one of Jacob's Jews, were one of Jacob's sons, represent that. 
So this book, whoever the writer was, he was addressing it to Hebrews. Not just Jews, but whoever the collective group of Israelites, um, whatever tribe, this was addressed to them. And that's why I said these were people who had res responded affirmatively to the message of the gospel. So they were now completed Jews. They, their Messiah, they recognized. Okay? They were completed Hebrews. Excuse me. All right? So that's the difference between Hebrews, Israelites, Jews. Today, the Jew is just synonymous with, um, with God's people, whoever they might be. And in Israel, if you, if you are from any place and you claim and you can show that you have heritage from any of the tribes, you can go on Aliyah, that means you can immigrate to Israel, no questions asked. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to do a little if-then problem solving. Steve, do it. <clears throat> I remember, and I might have this faulty, um, but in plant maintenance, in physical engineering, um, <clears throat> when you have something that was a problem, you did, oftentimes there would be a, a troubleshooting charge. And I might have this wrong, that's why I'm called Steve, but I remember that as an algorithmic method of solving the problem. Um, and you take one question, is it yes, is it no? So I'll tell you a story. <clears throat> this lady called in to, um, to um, a computer, you know, assist line, and she told the man that was on the other end that her computer didn't work. And so he said, okay, well, is it plugged in? Okay, I mean, this is the first thing. Is it plugged in? He said, well, I don't know. And he says, can you check that? And she said, I don't think so. And he said, well, why would that be? And she said, I can't find the plug. And he said, well, how far do you think the plug is from your computer? Oh, it's really close. I know it's close. And he said, well, why is it you don't think you can find the plug? He says, it's too dark. And he said, oh, okay. Do you think you can make it to the kitchen from where you are? Yes, it's, it's close. He said, okay, I want you to go to the kitchen. So when she got to the kitchen, she said, I'm in the kitchen. He says, okay, now I want you to open your refrigerator. And she opened the fridge and he said, what do you see in there? I can't see anything. And he said, okay. When the power comes back on, <laughs> if your computer still doesn't work, call me back. So, he had solved the problem. <clears throat> I think she was blown. I'm not sure about that. Deal with you later. So, if then, uh, today, if you hear his voice, then... Pardon not your heart. Okay, but there's a series of if-thens before we get there. 
today. All right. So, the first thing, is it today? It says today. Well, the question is, is it today? If you look in Hebrews chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, it reads, now he started out in chap chapter 3 of Hebrews talking about we're the house of God and therefore um, today if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. But then in, in chapter 4, he says um, in verse 6, he says, God again set a certain day, calling it the day when a long time after Moses, he spoke through David in Psalm 95. So the answer then to this question is, yes, it is today. Okay? Now, that may seem kind of elementary to Watson, but... <clears throat> In the dealings of God with people, there have been times, there have been these moments in time where God was speaking something for that time and people didn't hear it. He was moving in a certain way and they didn't get it. Okay? Here's an example for you, just a slightly modified lyric here, but yesterday all our troubles seem so far away. We had leeks and onions every day. <laughs> so they were stuck in yesterday, right? The people of Israel, they wanted to go back to Egypt. I remember the leeks and onions that were stuck in yesterday. It's today. He says, today is here. And he has said that since it remains for people to enter into his rest, he appointed another day, and it is called today. <clears throat> so we've gotten that far now. We've determined that it's, it's not yesterday, it's not tomorrow. It is today. So today, if. Now if, it means if or if not, right? So if you hear, well, maybe you don't hear. If you don't hear. But the question is if, if. You hear. So we're going to move down to can you hear? Are you hard of hearing? And if you are, why? This is all in that in that phrase today. If you hear, if you hear. The implication is that maybe you don't hear. And if you don't hear, why don't you hear? Is it because God is not speaking? Or is it because you listen to too much rock music as a young person and you, you just don't have much left? Or you work in a factory with, you know, and whatever it was, are there reasons why, or is there a reason why you don't hear? <clears throat> now, it was, it, it's pretty obvious today if you hear his voice, it means that there is a voice to be heard, right? Um, the next question. If you hear, are you hearing God's voice? That's a, that's a good question. Is what I'm hearing, is that God's voice? 
Or am I hearing something else? Now, I'm going to start meddling here. Cultural Christianity can really mess things up. And in our culture, these are the things that can come riding in as God's voice, and they're not God's voice. Prosperity. We have lived in a country where we've had things very good. And we understand the blessing of God is, you know, he desires for us to receive of his blessing, and that, that can be an abundance. But we may forget who the blesser is and just focus on the blessings. And we may think they're blessings when they really aren't because they can get to the point where they can be idols or they can be, they can, they can be, well, they, yeah, they can be idols, they can trap us, you know. So prosperity is one of those Thing. Now, I'm not talking about the prosperity gospel per se. That is clear enough. It's pretty easily identified. But I'm talking about the cultural milieu that just says, yeah, I got mine. It's all good. The American dream. And then <clears throat> here's another one. Me, 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 me. You know? A lot of times, and if you listen to contemporary Christian music, a lot of it is about what Jesus is doing for me, what God is doing for me. How I feel. Uh, yes. Um, and that is a result of the culture that we have grown up in. It's me-centered. And another part of that culture is now, 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 now. Instant gratification on now. So these are some things that are not Christian, but they're, they, they are things that are just embedded in there. And we may be hearing things that are not God. Because they they look like what we want, and we, of course, if it's what we want, it must be. Well, I'm a Christian, so I get what I want. You see how it gets twisted around like that, and it's not Republican. It's not Democrat either. I want to hasten to say that it's not political. <clears throat> We get a publication every month called Voice of the Martyrs. And there are some out there on the, on the board. I don't know if this one is out there yet, but <clears throat> this month, the, the topic was the blessings of persecution in China. The blessings of persecution in China. Remember when I spoke last time, I talked about revisiting blessings? <laughs> revisiting blessings? Well, in China, if you just plopped all of us down in China, and, and, and we go, they, they, don't, they, don't, they don't think the way we do because it's a different culture. And for 70 years plus, they've had to tell totalitarian rule and tried to stamp out Christianity and it's, it's not illegal in their constitution but in practice it's something that everybody knows where they are the government knows where all the Christians are and they meet and the pastors know that sooner or later they'll be called off to prison. And 
<clears throat> this one pastor in this article, he said, every week he would be invited down to the prison house or, you know, to go for tea. He'd be invited for tea. And for two or three hours, he would be, you know, interrogated and and then he would and, and encourage to reconsider what he was doing. And then eventually he went off to prison. There was somebody ready to step up and be the leader. And now they didn't volunteer for for persecution. They didn't volunteer for martyrdom. They don't, it's not like, oh, I want to be, you know, can you take my hand? No. But they have, their, their Christianity is not, what's the word? It's not diluted. It's not mixed all up with this other stuff. So <clears throat> we have to determine is what we're hearing, is it God's voice? Here's another one. Now this really messed some things up, but the, the doctrine of pre, pre-millennial, pre-trib rapture is only a few hundred years old. That, and that developed in Europe um, as things began to get more prosperous and you know, it was like, it, it, it kind of came out, I think, in the late 1800s, I think. Anyway, I mean, this is something that is relatively new, but the underpinnings of it are, well, we're going to get out of here before it gets really bad, because, well, God wouldn't keep us here if that's happening. So, if that's, if that's your, your, if that's your theology, I'm just saying, look at what underpins it, okay? Now, hey, hallelujah, you know, I'm not going to say, can you come back for me after the tribulation? <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it's part of this how we think. And so some of that's not God. You know, how we receive it, how we process it. Second Timothy, no, let me go to this. Proverbs 14.34 says, Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. My good friend Wayne Anderson called last night, and he called to tell me that he was rewriting something about the political realities in this world. I, mean, I don't need to get into that, but <clears throat> but he had a very specific point of view. And what I was saying to him was, Wayne, this is bigger than politics. It's bigger. And my prayer, okay, honest, my prayer is God expose wickedness expose evil, expose the things that have developed because I haven't done anything about it, maybe. We haven't as a people. But expose that so that people at least have a full-on heads up, this is reality, and they can choose. All right? Because righteousness exalts a nation. Sin is a reproach to any people. That's what the Word says. We know if it's in here, we can depend on that. That is God's Word. <clears throat> the Scripture says in 
2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training so that we can become thoroughly equipped for every good work. So we can take what we think we're hearing and we put it against this book. And we, we, we let that judge what the validity of what we're hearing. Hebrews 4.12 says that the Word of God is living and active and it divides between soul and spirit, between joints and marrow. It discerns the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And so both of these verses tell us we go to the Word and we let it be the plumb line. If we don't make it a practice of going to the Word, to the Bible, then we are vulnerable, we are more vulnerable to listening to uh, false prophets, false teachers. So, I'm going to flip over to Ezekiel chapter 13. Um, I don't know where that is in the few Bible, but it's right after Jeremiah, which is after Isaiah. So if you get somewhere in there, in the Old Testament, you can dial in on it. So I'm just going to read this because I, I'm, I want you to get the context, okay? From one? Ezekiel, yeah, chapter 13, verse 1. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel who are now prophesying. That's in contemporary terminology, of speak this word against the preachers, the people that are, are, are speaking to the people. Say to those who prophesy out of their own imaginations, whoops, hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Okay? This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Woe to foolish prophets who follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. Oops. Your prophets, O Israel, are like jackals among ruins. You have not gone up to the breaks in the wall to repair it for the house of Israel so that it will stand firm in the battle on the day of the Lord. Their visions are false and their divinations a lie. They say, the Lord declares when the Lord has not sent them, yet they expect that their words to be fulfilled. Have you not seen false visions and other lying divinations? When, when you say, the Lord declares, I have not spoken. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Because of your false words and your lying visions, I am against you, declares the Lord. My hand will be against the prophets who see false visions and utter lying divinations. They will not belong to the council of my people or be listed in the records of the house of Israel, nor will they enter the land of Israel. Then you will know that I am the solemn Lord, because they lead my people astray, saying, Peace, peace, when there's no peace. And because when a flimsy wall is built, they cover it with whitewash. Therefore, tell all those who cover it with whitewash that it is going to fall. Rain will come in torrents, and I will send hailstones hurtling down, and violent winds will burst forth. When the wall collapses, will people not ask you, where's the whitewash you covered it with? So, This is an example of a situation in the Old Testament where people, they wanted to hear good things, and so they had people that were telling them that. But it wasn't what God was saying. Now, 
I am not going to stand up here and say to you, Thus says the Lord. You know, this is what is coming. I haven't been given that, that word. But if you hear somebody saying that, judge it by the book. You know, is it just what I want to hear? Or am I hearing the word of the Lord? In Micah chapter 3, in verses 1 through 12, there's an indictment against false leaders. Um, you can go there if you like, but it's from the Old Testament. Then in Matthew 24, Jesus is talking in his Olivet Discord about false teachers, false prophets, deceiving, if it were possible, even the elect in the last times. Paul addresses this. Peter addresses it. Jude addresses it. So, pretty good, pretty good indication that there, there are there are going to be, there will be opportunities for you to hear something other than the voice of God. Substitutions. His voice may be drowned out by competing voices. So, perhaps you, you're not hard of hearing, but you've never really given yourself to receiving the engrafted word. You've never really taken this up and, and let, it, let it speak to you. And that takes some discipline. <clears throat> but it's how you determine, am I hearing the word of the Lord? James 1.21 is, is that reference about the engrafted word, receiving the engrafted word. So it doesn't matter how old you are, if that's where you are, that's not a mature spot. It's not to judge or scare you, it's to speak the truth so that you can move into that. And you do it by getting into what you know is God's word so that you have a standard by which to judge these other things that are coming at you. <clears throat> now, it is today. You can hear. You're hearing his voice. I mean, if you're hearing his voice, we've determined all these things. Then, a response is demanded. Today, if you hear his voice, do something with it. Or in this case, don't harden your heart. So, the Israelites in Exodus 19, um, they began to harden their hearts before this that he was speaking about when they, were, when they sent out the spies. When God came down on the mountain and all the Israelites were around it, they heard it, uh, and they, they told Moses, you go talk to God, and then you come back and tell us what he said. It's too terrifying. We don't, we don't want to deal with him directly. Now, that's a true statement. It is. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But that's who, that's who we're called from, by, and that's what we're called to. And just because it scares the socks off of us, well, good. Then we're standing on holy ground with bare feet. Amen. Yeah. So here are some ways that a person may harden their heart. The first one is you deny that it's God speaking. Oh, I, 
that's not God's will. That's not God's will. So he says he's, he is saying something. Here's one for you. This this one, I mean, I've heard this with my own ears. The Great Commission was for the apostles and those who were appointed leaders <coughs> after them. And that's what the great that's what the Great Commission go into all the world and make disciples. That's who it's for. Doesn't apply to you and me. Yeah. So, well, that actually is is not denying that God's speaking. That's what we call diminishing the message. That's another one. Diminish the message. It's like I take what I hear and I dumb it down to what I can make work for me. So it's not too scary for me. It's not. I mean, I I hear people pray that way, and I just want to scream. And I'm like, who are you talking to? You know? But we, we do that. We diminish the message. He said this, but, well, he must have meant this. Because this is what I can, I can embrace. I can wrap my head around that. So that's one of the ways that people can harden their hearts. Another thing is you can disqualify yourself. Moses tried that one. Imagine this. You're talking to a bush. You're talking to a bush that's on fire. And you're having a conversation with a bush. And you're saying, uh, I'm not qualified. Now, it sounds ludicrous, but I'm guessing I might have behaved the same way. You know, when God confronted him and said, I'm going to send you to Egypt. <clears throat> so it's not an uncommon thing to just go, yeah, I hear God, but with that, I'm not qualified for that. That clearly can't be God speak. I mean, it, I, 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 God, I, yeah, I, 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 and God's saying, what's that got to do with anything? It's, I am. <laughs> not, I, 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 I am. Yeah. <clears throat> Another one, and this is, this is, whew, this is, this is subtle. You can delay your response. Yeah. Um, I heard this here in town. I won't mention any names, but a few years ago, a friend of mine said, I feel like God is called, probably calling me to the pastorate. So after I retire from my career, then I'm going to do that. Okay? Well, that would be probably unless God had said, I'm calling you in 20 years. That would be about delay. Um, I, I hear God calling, but I've got, I got this project I want to finish up first. And then I'm all in. <clears throat> Delayed obedience is not obedience. And then, of course, the last way, there are probably others, but the last way is you just, just flat disobey. Like, yeah, it's God speaking to me, but I ain't doing it. And Jonah can tell you how that was a job. <clears throat> so, today, if you hear his voice. Now we had a we had a group meeting here Friday, and we were talking about just perceptions about what was kind of percolating up, and we 
all agreed that God was speaking. It, it wasn't real clear, but God was stirring some things. And, you know, God is a pretty good communicator. Um, if we could find that donkey, we could ask him. Um, but how he speaks today is it's up to him. But it must line up. It must line up. That's how we judge. Are we hearing it? Are we hearing it clearly? Are we hearing it undefiled? And then, if we hear it, what are we going to do about it? We're going to do what he says to do about it. We're not going to go, I hear it. Okay, I've got a method. I'm off on it. That one doesn't work either. So, anyway... I, I don't know if this makes any sense to you or has an application. I hope so. I hope this is God speaking to all of us. It is today. And if you're not hearing, repent and be healed. You're either not hearing because you've had other things that are so messed up, you're, you're hearing that you can't, and God can heal that. Or you're not hearing because you haven't given yourself to hear, or it's all clouded up with this cultural stuff that's coming at you from everywhere. So if you're not clear on what God is saying, to you here and now in this setting go to him and just be honest with him I'm not hearing you God I think you're speaking and I just present myself to you and I repent for having allowed whatever to put me where I am I can't hear I'm not hearing clearly Okay? Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, today, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of your favor upon us. And it is today because you have appointed a day and you have said that today there's a place of rest that we can enter into and we can enter into it and have a fellowship and a relationship that brings rest, no matter what that may look like in terms of our lives. We see this in the case of persecuted Christians around the world, where they can live in a rest because they discovered you in the middle of the storm. We pray, Father, that you will be gracious to us and do a work in us that makes us steady and receptive and responsive to your word. In Jesus' name, amen.